Have you ever wondered if you might be a misanthrope? Now you might be asking, what exactly is a misanthrope? Well, a misanthrope is someone who generally dislikes or distrusts humanity. It's not about hating individuals per se, but more about having a skeptical view of human nature and society as a whole. Misanthropes often have a keen sense of observation, noticing the flaws and hypocrisies in people and societal structures that others might gloss over. They may find themselves feeling frustrated or disillusioned with the world around them. It's not always a black and white issue, and it's possible to have misanthropic tendencies without being a full-blown misanthrope. Some common traits include a preference for solitude, a critical or cynical outlook, and a disinterest in social norms or conventions. It's important to note that being a misanthrope is not inherently negative but rather a different lens through which to view the world. If you've ever questioned whether you might be a misanthrope, this interactive quiz is for you. Question 1. How do you feel in social situations? This query may seem simple, but it can reveal a lot about your relationship with the world around you. Do you find yourself energized, thriving on the buzz of conversation, the exchange of ideas, the warmth of shared laughter? Or perhaps you're somewhere in the middle enjoying the company of others but also appreciating your quiet moments. On the other end of the spectrum, you might find social situations draining, even frustrating. The noise, the small talk, the superficiality. It all could feel too much, too fast, too inauthentic. Wherever you fall on this spectrum, it's important to remember that your feelings are entirely your own. They are neither good nor bad, they simply are. It's about understanding yourself better, about peeling back the layers to reveal the core of your being. Remember, there are no right or wrong answers here, only self-discovery. Question two, what are your general views on humanity? This isn't a simple question, is it? But let's break it down together. Do you see humanity as a beacon of hope, a vibrant tapestry of individuals working towards a brighter future? Or perhaps you view people as inherently good, full of potential and kindness, but sometimes led astray. On the other hand, you might perceive humanity as a chaotic and flawed entity, full of contradictions. Or do you lean towards an even darker perspective, seeing mankind as inherently selfish and destructive, a blight on the planet? There's a whole spectrum of views from the sunniest optimism to the deepest cynicism. And it's important to remember, there's no right or wrong answer here. It's all about your personal perspective. So where do you stand? Your perspective of humanity can say a lot about your potential misanthropy. Question 3. How do you view your personal relationships? Now, this is a spectrum and we all fall somewhere along it. On one end, there are those who deeply cherish their personal relationships. They find immense joy and fulfillment in connecting with others, whether it's catching up with an old friend, spending quality time with family, or simply having a heart-to-heart -heart with a loved one. Then there are those who feel indifferent. They neither derive pleasure nor discomfort from their relationships. They see them as just another part of life, neither a source of joy nor a burden. On the other hand, some people find personal relationships burdensome or even unnecessary. They may see them as complex, tiring, and draining, preferring solitude over the company. So, where do you think you fall on this spectrum? Remember, there's no right or wrong answer here. It's all about understanding yourself better. Your feelings about personal relationships can be a key indicator of misanthropy. Question 4. Do you prefer solitude or company? This question is not about being an introvert or an extrovert. It's about your preference when it comes to sharing your space, time, and energy with others. Let's explore some answers. Option A. You thrive in the company of others. You enjoy the energy and ideas that flow from social interactions, and you feel energized by these exchanges. Option B. You appreciate a balance. You enjoy socializing, but also value your alone time to recharge and process your thoughts. Option C. You lean towards solitude. While you don't mind occasional social interactions, you cherish your alone time and find it fulfilling. Option D. You prefer solitude always. You find peace in your own company and often feel drained by social interactions. Remember, there's no right or wrong answer here. It's about understanding yourself better. Your preference between solitude and company can provide insight into whether you might be a misanthrope. Question 5. How do you view life in general? This inquiry may seem philosophical, but it's a crucial one. Do you see life as a beautiful journey, a path filled with opportunities for growth, learning, and connections? Or perhaps you view life as a complex puzzle, a series of challenges to overcome and mysteries to unravel. Maybe for you, life is more like a roller coaster ride, full of ups and downs, thrilling at times, terrifying at others, 
but always moving forward? Or do you see life as a grand play, where we're all actors playing our parts, contributing to the unfolding drama? On the other hand, maybe you see life as a meaningless endeavor, void of purpose or direction, a mere collection of random events. Or perhaps you see it as an unending struggle, a constant battle against the odds. Your general perspective on life can point towards potential misanthropy. Now that you've answered all the questions, it's time to interpret your answers. Let's look at the bigger picture. You've answered a series of questions that explore your attitudes towards social situations, your views on humanity, your personal relationships, and your perspective on life. These questions were designed to provide a glimpse into your potential inclination towards misanthropy, which is essentially a general dislike, distrust, or disdain for the human species. If you found yourself often opting for solitude over company, expressing pessimistic views about humanity, or feeling uncomfortable in social situations, you might be leaning towards the misanthrope side of the spectrum. This doesn't mean you've been branded a misanthrope, it merely suggests that you may have tendencies that align with misanthropy. But remember, this is not a definitive diagnosis, it's a self-assessment tool designed to help you understand yourself better. It's not meant to label you or to cause distress, instead, it should serve as a stepping stone towards self-awareness and personal growth. Your personal relationships and your perspective on life also contribute significantly to this interpretation. If you find it hard to trust people or you often feel disappointed by human behavior, these could be signs of misanthropic tendencies. Yet again, it's essential to remember that this doesn't define you. We are complex beings capable of change and growth. Our views can shift, our attitudes can evolve, and our perspectives can be broadened. Perhaps you identify with some aspects of misanthropy today, but that doesn't mean you'll feel the same way tomorrow. And that's okay, it's all part of the journey towards understanding ourselves and navigating our place in the world. It's okay to question, to introspect, and to seek answers. It's through this process that we learn, grow, and evolve. Regardless of your results, remember that self-awareness is the first step towards self-improvement. So, are you a misanthrope? We've navigated through a series of introspective inquiries, each shedding light on different aspects of your temperament, outlook, and personal preferences. Let's take a moment to reflect on what we've discovered. We started off evaluating your comfort and preference in social situations. If you found yourself preferring solitude over company, it might suggest a leaning towards misanthropy. But remember, craving for alone time doesn't necessarily make you a misanthrope. It could just mean you're an introvert. Our second question delved into your views on humanity. A misanthrope typically harbors a cynical view of human nature often feeling frustrated, disappointed, or even disgusted by people's actions and motivations. If you resonated with these sentiments, you might be leaning towards misanthropy. Next, we explored your personal relationships. An inclination towards superficial relationships or a lack of close connections could signify a misanthropic tendency. But again, this isn't definitive. It's crucial to differentiate between misanthropy and other factors such as social anxiety or introversion. We then questioned your preference for solitude versus company. If you found yourself relishing in your own company more than being around others, this could be another sign of misanthropy. Yet it might also indicate that you're a solitary individual by nature. Lastly, we gauged your perspective on life. If you often feel disenchanted or disillusioned, it could be a sign of misanthropy. However, it could also be a symptom of depression or other mental health issues. Remember, this test isn't a diagnostic tool. It's merely a starting point, a way to encourage self-reflection and understanding. If you recognized yourself in many of these points, and you're struggling with negative feelings towards humanity, it might be helpful to seek professional help. Misanthropy, like any other disposition, isn't inherently bad. It's how you manage it that matters. Remember, understanding yourself is the key to personal growth. Thanks for joining me on this journey of self-discovery.